Hello, hello. Welcome to Human Design Coffee Talk. And today we're gonna to be talking all things manifesting generators. So if you're an MG or have an MG in your life, come join us. Uh, Teresa will be hopping on shortly. It's actually an appropriate time for coffee. Usually we're on here later in the afternoon. Hello, hello. Hello. And as you guys are jumping on, uh, we would love to know who's with us today. Um, if you wanna share anything about your design. Let's see here. Good morning, good morning. So I had a couple questions in the question box and a couple uh, myths. So we'll go over those. And so if there's anything that, any questions that you have about manifesting generators, or any myths that you wanna bust, drop them in the comments. Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. There's Teresa. Let's see here. Get her invited. Welcome to her. Oops. Hello. Okay. Hey, hey. Good morning. I got my coffee. Mm. Oh, I have some tea today. Tea time. Good morning, everybody that's <laughs> joining us. Today we're diving into manifesting generators. So um, a few more people have hopped on, but if you have any questions or comments or myths that you wanna bust, um, give us something to respond to. Drop it down in the comments. All right. Yes. <clears throat> so the other day, Teresa and I were chatting and she was reading channels by type and there was some stuff in there about manifesting, manifesting generators that was like, hey, okay. It felt very validating for the way that we kind of live our lives and experience being an MG. And, you know, as manifesting generators, so we're generators, right? And we're raised to be manifestors. And with that, um, you know, our parents would inform us and not give us anything to respond to. So we think that's how we're supposed to be in the world whether or not our parents are manifestors or not, so there's not that dialogue, you know, for most of us. And so we go out into the world being manifestors. <laughs> that sounded like a human sneeze. <laughs> so, um, being that we are raised as manifestors, before we even are aware of our mg -ness, we get through life, you know, it's kind of, it's not that bad. And then we learn about human design and we're like, Oh no, you're a generator. You got to wait to respond. And then it's like, well, how come in these times in my life, you know, knowing what I know about human design and looking back at situations, I'm like, that was actually correct for me. You know? So there's all of this stuff around being a manifesting generator. And, um, I, today we're going to read that passage and, if you guys want to comment on it, we'd love to discuss it, especially if you are an MG um, and how that's been for you. And if you feel called to join us, you can, if there's something to that you wanna respond to and you're feeling like chatting with us, you're welcome to send a request. <clears throat> Let's yeah. dive in. So should we dive into the passage? All right, so this is the channels by type um, PDF. I believe you can get it on Jovian Archive, probably. Is what I think. I've had it for a long time. This is actually one of the first human design PDFs <laughs> I bought, and I didn't even know what I was buying. <laughs> so I didn't really, I didn't understand it all that much. Um, so I haven't really dug into it as much as I should have, I would say. Um, well, it's whatever, t timing for everything. But I noticed that there's... Uh, chapter, I guess you could call it, called a manifesting generator has a different strategy. So he says, in looking at energy types, there is a, I don't even know how to call it, you could call it a crossover version. We have an awful lot of charts in which a sacral center is a motor connected to the throat, and there are endless questions from analysts as to whether this is a manifestor or this is a generator. 
or exactly how all of it works. The first thing to recognize about this is that at the moment that the throat is connected to a motor, it is always a manifester, technically. It's important to understand that it's technically. However, when the sacral center is the motor and it's connected to the throat, the sacral overwhelms in that sense. In other words, the sacral dominates it by its very nature. Now, it doesn't change that that person is it doesn't change that person into a generator. It changes them into a manifesting generator. And a manifesting generator has a different strategy than either a manifester or a generator. We know that the manifester strategy is to eliminate resistance by informing before it acts. It's the only way that the manifester eliminates resistance. The generator eliminates resistance by waiting to respond. But for the manifesting generator, they play out a generator-like role. In other words, the manifesting generator waits to be asked to use its power. Now, by the way, that gives the manifesting generator the easiest strategy of the energy types. In other ways, the manifester finds it exceedingly difficult to inform any one of its actions beforehand because it's been conditioned in its life to know that it's going to meet resistance. It makes it angry even to think that it has to let somebody else know. But the manifesting generator doesn't have to go through that. The manifesting generator can just wait to be asked to use its power and instead of responding can immediately manifest. These people are often charismatic, that is... Often they carry the 2034, and there really is an ease and a charisma in action when you see an MG that is operating correctly. In other words, they've been asked to use their power. Otherwise, you have a frustrated and angry person. You get the combination. And of course, that will depend on what channels are defined so that you can see how that theme really operates within the body graph itself. Very interesting, eh? Because you know what? I've always heard like an MG is a generator a subtype of generator mm -hmm. yes that's true but he makes it pretty clear that it's yeah. a crossover type he uses that word crossover um and i think especially you know you and i have talked about this there's a different we're both feeling cognition right there's a different vibe mm -hmm. to an mg that has a motor directly to the throat so any of the manifester channels and yes, an mg like that goes through center. other yeah. channels oh, you know different. yeah Mm hmm there's just a it yeah i mean those man there's only what four manifestor channels two three three four three my brain where's the body graph let me look, <laughs> let me look at a body graph <laughs> one two three four three Or manifestor channels. Yeah, so that's like, it's potent, yeah. right? It's a motor yeah. connected to the throat. I can't believe we caught this live. Welcome to the live. Is there only three? I thought there's four. One, Welcome. Two, three, four. Four direct. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> See? Um, semantics. But, uh, semantics. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just, well, I'm looking at the... Off the solar plexus, <coughs> ego, sacral. But 2034, yeah, yeah, 2034 counts because, so the 2034 <coughs> is like the true MG, yeah. it's, you it's know? A motor. And I mm -hmm. was giving myself things to respond to. I wrote down some notes because my, otherwise I'll just be a squirrel brain. And, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, <laughs> the 2034, there's this, you know, they can be the slave, right? Ra says, like, they can totally be the slave. And so if you have this 2034 channel, then it's very important to recognize that that needs to be guided, you know, um, and that otherwise you just get lost in the sauce and you're just a slave to everybody else around you because you have this, a, a lot of energy and people recognize that you have a lot of energy and so they can abuse that. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important if you have that channel of charisma to, which we all have right now, <laughs> like, <laughs> whether you're an MG or Until not, what, you know, like I'm February this for a long time. So you're getting a little, you're getting the flavors of what it's like to have that. So maybe lately, um, if you don't normally have that, or you don't even have a defined sacral and you're noticing this kind of oomph or people even recognizing that you have more energy, it's probably 2034, but it needs to be guided. And I know several people with 2034 and they're all so different. Obviously their designs, they're differentiated, but their energy levels are different. 2034 needs to be almost like it, 
it's it's like you have the the energy just like any anything that comes off the sacral but you have the energy for the certain thing you know um that quiz that uh talus did was like if you have the 2034 you could have and you're doing something that you love how much energy do you have and it was like 16 plus hours was like the average or something like that it was wild but really making sure that you have that you're entering into things correctly because then you'll have that energy and, and when it gets abused that's when we get burnt out and that's when we have those those physical issues that come up i see somebody yeah well i think a lot of mgs uh -huh. just don't know how to manage that energy within themselves i mean it's like all or nothing like i'm either full throttle like not taking a day off you know just full mm -hmm. speed ahead mm -hmm. or i'm loafing <laughs> because if i'm not managing my energy and that's what happened to me i you know i was working for myself i worked two jobs on top of working for myself i was building my business and another business at the same time i was literally working seven days a week and bartending still and it was just insanity and i i had it was like people would talk to me and they'd be like how are you doing all this and i was also in a band and like showing up to practice at night after i had been mm -hmm, up since three o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning <laughs> coaching and whatnot and i remember people just being like mm -hmm. how are you doing all of this like yeah. this is yeah. insane yeah i was like no yeah it's fine like i'm good <laughs> right and then i wasn't good <laughs> all of a sudden too it was like all of a sudden it was like Yes. Boom, yes. your ass yes. is on. The yes, couch exactly. And we, we look <laughs> back at those times. I think it's easy. Um, and this could be for any type, right? Because we're all kind of like any other type could be conditioned to be a generator or, or like keep up. And so we have the MGs out there. Like I would go to work at when I was in college, I'd go to work at a gas station from seven to noon. And then I would have class from one to eight. And then I would go to work at a bar from nine to two in the morning and do that every day literally seven days a week for like 18 months you know and so i look back at those times in my life and i'm like but i should be able to do that stuff anymore but i, I was that was that was not correct you know <laughs> that was very not sustainable i mean the safe yeah. role is all about what's sustainable you know so that's like blatant yeah. abuse of our sacral energy <laughs> and i think i just in my experience mg is come to me burnt out more often than pure generators um, because it's almost like we have that nitrous oxide attached to the vehicle, that extra oomph, and then you ride that out and it burns yeah, out quickly. I've had several MG clients who come to me and they're like, yeah, everything I read about an MG, like that's, I don't, ha I have no energy. I'm just like, and I'm like, it's just you lost that spark you know you don't it doesn't need to be the spark for everything you don't need to have the same amount of energy when you clean your toilet as when you you know are in your passion position at work or you're in your career or whatever you want to do in life that's going to vary but or they're just like very calm and almost like uh almost like the energy of a manifester that more calm like their their sacral is just you know, mm -hmm. and so usually in the session, we, we talk about things and they kind of start to get a little bit like, oh, yeah, like a little bit remembering. And coincidentally, several of them have been in human design for a while. And they're like, I don't know what's going on. And they just need these little refreshers. Like, you know, we get bombarded with like manifesting generators, you can do the things and you can skip steps and pivot when you want and all this stuff. And it's like, Okay, and then our mind gets into it, but that's what I should be doing because I'm an MG, and it's like, oh no, you got to get in your body, got to get in your body, and remember what specifically how you're designed, how your circuitry goes, what what pulses through you. Um, somebody had a question. Yeah, my partner has the 2034 unconsciously. The 4521 is his only conscious channel. Really interesting to observe how he consciously tries to act like a manifester sometimes. I have that. Um, that's where my split is in my chart. I've talked about this in a couple other lives, but I'll touch on it briefly. Um, that's how I operated through life. My split, I have 21, 45, and 26, and then everything else is separate of that. So I thought I was a manifester when I first learned about human design. I was like, oh, for sure, that's me. And then I realized that's not me, and that wasn't always correct. Um, so that's something to be aware of because our auras can kind of shift to, to closing, you know, 
And one of the cool perks about being a manifesting generator is we have that generator aura, right? Um, and it's magnificent. I have a, okay, I gotta, I gotta share this because I just had this really cool experience yesterday. And I'm like, God, the aura is so cool. I kind of shift in and out of remembering it because I'm just living life, right? And then you have these things where the aura is like, or you're like, whoa, and you're like, that was totally my aura. So I own another business that we do like classes and workshops and one-on-ones all around like mind, body, energy stuff. And somebody had reached out on the business um, profile and asked if we were going to have a specific facilitator back. And I was like, I'm not sure, you know, that would be great. I know that this specific facilitator is a manifester. So I'm like, I'm not going to. There's, I'm not going to initiate that conversation. She also lives across the country and we haven't talked to each other in six months. Not because we don't get along, but just because life. What? And I'm like, okay, you know, life we'll just is. see what happens. Two hours later, she messaged me, the woman from California. And she says, hey, we need to catch up. <laughs> and I was like, what just happened? You know? Like I could have initiated her what? and that would, I, it wasn't, I, I even, I checked in now, not correct. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not for me when responding to that woman's message about, Hey, is this certain facilitator coming back? And then I just waited and I was like, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Two hours later out of the blue, she's like, Hey, we need to catch up. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, yeah, I feel like yeah. we both have tons of stories like that now. It's just like, I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. magnetic aura, it's just, <laughs> even my friend the other day, who's an MG, I messaged her and I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Are you alive? Like what's going on? And, um, we were just chatting and I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm dog sitting for this house that has a hot tub. Do you want to come hang out with me? And she's like, no shit. I was just Googling inflatable hot tubs. because <laughs> I really want one. And I just, like five minutes before I die. Yeah. Her. And I'm like, you don't even have aura, to go and get it. Right? Literally, right? it's just come and, to you. And, and so if there's MGs mm -hmm. watching, I, um, you know, here's something to respond to, to look back at situations in your life where, where um, maybe you were overly initiating and see how, you know, just, you can kind of like somatically check back in your body and see how you feel. And you can feel when your aura is more closed and you can feel when it's more of that enveloping thing and so that's how we can kind of you know gauge a whole lot with our aura and I think that's something that is not talked about a lot as far as auras with MGs totally um we have some other questions here let's see I also wanted to comment on um mm. I'm MG with seven open centers, only channels <laughs> channel of charisma I don't feel that energized you know I've done a few readings for MGs that have only that channel and they are kind of one way or the other uh, one person in particular that i'm thinking is literally yeah. like the energizer bunny i have never met a more energized off the walls type of person um i guess my one suggestion would be to perhaps look into thyroid health because mgs also have a tendency to burn out their thyroid and brandy has experience with this so that might be something to like go to a doctor about if you're not feeling very energized there might be something off in your body mm -hmm. and it may be from burning yourself out in the past yeah or absolutely there might just be that's an huge and i'd sort. be curious about your profile um also also you could have like hey, yeah. 52 yeah. Well, or something I, and sometimes i know somebody with channel that can shift the energy. and 952 and she has thyroid issues like dealt with them for a, a long time. And I was mm -hmm. kind of talking to her about it. And I was just like, you know, have awareness around this split. You know, we were just having conversation. And yeah, she's like, Oh, my gosh, I never even thought about that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I would say, <laughs> like an overwhelming majority of MGs that I've worked with who are like, in their late 20s, early 30s, that range have had thyroid issues. My husband mm -hmm. being one of them, his actually yeah, started, started in his early uh, 20s, so. <laughs> I was... Of course, six line shit. Yeah, yeah. Get on yeah. the fucking roof. <laughs> um, 
let's see what else we got. I am experiencing the painful burnout from the 2034. I also have a defined solar plexus. Is there any advice you can give on what I'm experiencing? Oof. So it's hard because with the defined solar plexus, it kind of depends on what your channels are, of course. Um, but what I've experienced is when I'm in a low, I'm exhausted. That's like my first inclination that's like the first clue that I get that I'm starting to go into an emotional low my physical body is just like like I need to rest going into a low and I'm a person that has pretty much all unconscious channels so a lot of it's in my body right with the uh, solar plexus so I would say pay attention to that when you're getting tired and you're starting to go into a low and allowing yourself to rest from that and then aside from that, it's really paying attention to your mind when your mind is trying to force you to do things. Because I think as MGs, we have a tendency to be like, <laughs> but I rested for two days, <laughs> you know? And I'm included, like I got sick a few months ago and I pretty much couldn't do anything for a week. And I remember I was trying to kind of get myself to do work and start moving again. And I kept getting like injured. I'd like stub my toe or it was just like, my body or the universe, whatever, was trying to get me to slow the fuck down even more. And I don't know who I was talking to, but I'm like, I feel like I'm slowing mm -hmm. down as much as I can. And they're like, are you though? <laughs> oh, I think so. Your mind's I idea I of I slowing down can be yeah. very different. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was you talk probably. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's just like, yeah, your mind's idea of slowing down is so different than the body. Um, that being said, I know we all have lives to live. We have to survive in this freaking world. Um, so any time where I've just been like, what do I do next? I just, I wait to respond. Like there, it, something so always I comes through, right? Here. I just wrote a little note. Um, so you talk about being in having exhaustion as, as MGs, you know, we have that burnout exhaustion. We also can experience exhaustion and um, maybe some of you guys have experienced this likely if you're in generator type or MG, but that satisfaction, it can also be feeling exhausting initially when you're not used to it. So if you're like, so, oh, here's this, because mm -hmm. we think the things light us up or we think the things are, you know, correct for us because we have all of this energy and then we experience that burnout. So where are times in your life where you've, how can you differentiate between like that burnout and just satisfied from what you've done that day you know what I'm saying because mm. like even the past couple of weeks there's totally. days where when I was at inner space for ever the other day and then I came home and I was just like oh yes it's almost more of that basking in the exhaustion versus like plummeting into exhaustion yeah, yeah it's more of like oh I can't wait to just like put my feet up and <laughs> you know, have a cup of tea before bed and just like, oh, I had such a good day. It's that kind of energy where burnout exhaustion is like, I have no motivation. I literally can't even think. Yeah, it's exactly. almost like watching TV is even exhausting where you're like, I'm yeah, too exhausted yeah. to even find something to watch. Um, it's, it's bad. And especially if you have a fourth line body. So if you're a one, four, or two, four, um, you can have a tendency to have that physical exhaustion as yeah. well so there can be a few different factors with that um and I've definitely been experiencing that the last couple of weeks I'm like just keeping up with the network man I, I almost need to go off grid for a little bit because it's exhausting to keep up with the um, network I think says, can you share your line. thoughts about MGs and mastery the way messaging is packaged positions generators as the one to achieve mastery MGs are here for skipping steps and the quickest path, not enough. So Ross speaks on this and he actually says like MGs, well, generators are here for me, but like MGs, we can kind of, <clears throat> I don't want to like distort some words, not get there faster, but like more efficiently. Efficiency. Mm, efficiency. Yeah. And we're not yeah. meant to work linearly. So like I've noticed, like I was talking to my generator friend yesterday and like just her process of learning human design, yeah. you know, she's very much done it by the books, the correct way, you know, um, the first year I'm just going to focus on strategy and authority. And I'm not saying the way I did it was better by any means, but there's no better well, I mean, in life. First, it's just all an experience. But like... <laughs> 
That's an MG thing. That's an MG thing. <laughs> that I didn't even read, though. I, like, scrolled through it. <laughs> I mean, that's something we, you sent me that thing the other day with, she's like, tell me you're an MG without telling me you're an MG. And she had like filled out paperwork and then had to like scratch a bunch of shit out because she didn't read the directions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, okay, back to my point though. I think we, we go through things like this, right? It's not just like, okay, I'm going to master this first step. And then as soon as I mastered that step, I'm going to master the next step. It's very much like, oh, shit, I'm going to go over here and check this out. And then I'm going to go over here and check this out. And we ultimately end up, if it's something that's important to us, we will come back and redo whatever steps we skipped that was not beneficial. So I almost think it's kind of a hit or miss thing. It's like we skip a step and we discover something that's really efficient. Or, or we're like, shit, I got to go back because, because I missed we, something. We learn, we learn, like, like oh, shoot, don't. You know, I learned this. Don't do this. You know, we learn also the the ways right. that you shouldn't do don't that. Don't do it. Do it really quickly. So it's like, you know, the generator step by step by step process. We could be going to the same place, a generator and an MG, and the MG is like this, and the generator is doing the step by step thing, and we're going to learn new things. But the manifesting generator, I feel, is going to have, and this just might be a part of my definition, but like hey, here's these solutions. <laughs> this is what I learned along the way, you know, because the generators aren't like fucking up as much as the manifesting generators are. Well, yeah, and I would, I would also, it's kind of like one of those yeah. things like we're as a third yeah. line, like third line, you know, yeah. profiles just need to be okay with making mistakes. MGs are kind of similar. Like we're going to make mistakes. We're going to learn things the hard way sometimes because we skipped a step. Um, and this, so she also said, uh, it might be her hanging gate 16. I would definitely say there's probably some not self in that 48. If you have that hanging gate 16 and that's all about, yeah. you know, yeah. the well, it's all about mastery. It's all about depth. And if, if you have that hanging yeah. gate 16, there's going to be not self living in there. So you might feel more pressured or your mind might be pressuring you more, where I'm not telling you to be reckless here, but I'm saying to yeah. kind of embrace that just non-linear uh, component of being an MG because I think that's one of the biggest shadows that MGs come to me with is I'm all over the place. I fuck up sometimes, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, and it's just almost like we have to yeah, embrace have being a little bit messy with things. Right. And then this is where it comes down to differentiation as well, because even we're being very general about MGs right now, but there's going to be certain things in your design mm -hmm. that like are very unique to you. So, you know, you might be an MG that's more focused on mastery. And, and I do have to say with the right things, like there's been a few things in my life that I have been, I still get to mastery or I'm getting there, but it's well, just, also, it doesn't look the same as a generator, right? So it's not like we're not capable of mastery. It line, just though, so looks you're not different. Gonna... <laughs> you're gonna <be> like... <laughs> I don't even know when I'm a master or when I'm not, I don't yeah, know when I'm so good many, at anything or so when I'm great. <laughs> to everything. And that's why it's so important for you to know your own design, no matter how far into human design you are, revisit your own chart. You know, I get two readings from two different people every year, at least just um, to keep to just see different perspectives, because everybody sees things differently. And of course, that's an outer authority for me. But I I'm just like, what do you see that I'm not seeing? Because we be blinded by our own shit. You know, especially not looking at our like not self themes, we might go into our chart and just look at all the, ooh, look at what I am. And we're not like, ooh, look at what I am. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's why like nuanced conversations are important as well about this. And, and this is the gripe that Brandy and I tend to have with, you know, popular human design where mm -hmm. it's just something being very generalized on Instagram and then you might not be very familiar with the system and you're like, well, I'm an MG. I'm supposed to have all this energy or I'm an MG. I'm supposed to skip steps, but I actually really like mastery. And you know, it's, it, it kind of, I just don't like generalized yeah, yeah. stuff. And I know we have to kind of try even to have this conversation, well, but that's where we're trying to go into all the others, well. you know, when we're sharing from our own personal experience and being like, Hey, you know, this is just what I experience in my, with my design. Or if we're going to share generalized information, I almost like, 
that's why it makes sense to share like that source information because then people can can not play then it's not the game of telephone you know or then it's easy for people to get into their minds oh i'm an mg i should do this you know depending on you know your definition up here but um it can really get like a mind game and it's about being in your body and so every mm -hmm. single mg is going to be different depending on your definition even if you were to find somebody with the exact same chart as you your not self themes are going to be different because there's going to be some that come out stronger than the others or whatever so that yeah the generalized information while it's great it can give us something that sparks us but always make sure you're checking in with your own authority is that correct for you i did a post on this recently <clears throat> on my page talking about mm -hmm. being a yes person you know are you a yes person are you just seeing something and being like yes that's me Yes, that yes, and following and just cheering on. And it's like, do you know who you're cheering on? Do you know their definition? Do you know about their not self? Are they are you cheering on that person's not self? And like fe feeling that fire. So there's just there's so much to this. But yeah. Okay. Do we want to get a little um, Let's get spicy. a little spicy for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> so remember that post you sent me yesterday where this this person is teaching tips for mgs and they said a good tip is to like if you have an idea right because we get all these ideas i want to initiate this i want to do that if i want to do this if you have an idea wait for three signs from the universe and then you can move forward with the idea because that's a sign Mm -hmm. three signs and now it's so we aren't what do you uh, think about that Brandy? it's a very thing <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just like so much wants to come out what what it's a very good thing to remember as generator types that what comes to us in our aura they're not signs of confirmation they are things to respond to it's like a chance for you to check in with your sacral or if you're emotional authority to, to ride your wave on that thing, to add more information, right? It's not like, oh, I saw that, that means I need to do that, because that's the mind. Because then you start, you'll start creating shit. You know, we've all experienced Trust that. Me. You start talking about a car that you want to get and you see them all over the place. Uh -huh. If everybody were to do that and be like, oh, I've seen that car three times, that means oh, human design tells me, which is not, this is, that's not human design, Human design says that I need to do it now because I've seen that car three times. That's absolutely uh -huh. not human design. If that's, if that's a teaching of somebody's, that's fine. But so that's, that's not how things work when they are brought into our aura. We bring it to respond. You see that car, you see, oh, ugh, why does I feel like that? You know, and it's just kind of like you feel yourself contracting or constricting. And you're like, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're meant to work in response to things. So mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. does working in response mean, right? It gives you an opportunity to take a next step. So let's just say, for example, I have this download that I want to go to massage school and I want to mm -hmm. be a massage therapist. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, you know, I'm emotional. So first of all, that could take me who knows how long, depending on my wave, to actually make a decision about that. Let's say a week goes by and a commercial with a phone number that I could call comes up and is like, this is a massage school. Maybe you want to call this number. <laughs> and I'm getting a response from my body and I've waited a week. You know, I've been riding my wave about this for a little while and I'm really feeling like I want to take the next step with going to massage school. And now there's literally a phone number for me to mm -hmm, call mm -hmm. and work in response with. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we're off and running. Um, and I'm sure you guys can feel the difference when you're working in response versus when you just have an idea out of thin air. And I'm not saying that it's not okay to have ideas out of thin air. Um, but even with something as simple as content creation, I've been just playing around with not even making content mm -hmm. unless I'm working in response to something. Like my post from the other day where I was saying human design is not uh, a quick fix. First of all, something happened that kind of gave me something to ride my wave about. And so I was getting clarity around this thing that happened. And I was kind of having that idea floating around of like, I want to tell this story, but I don't, I don't know what 
to really write about. I'm just going to wait till I'm clear. And then I was talking to a friend and she was like, yeah, man, it just sucks because I think a lot of people think human design is a quick fix. And I was like, boom. And I literally just like got on my computer mm -hmm. and started mm -hmm. typing and I was in response mode. Right. Um, so it, there's just such a different, there's almost like this, it almost just feels like you're floating. It's like, I'm just floating through this experience. Too, with that, that I want to comment on the download part. Um, cause uh, of course, depending on your definition, Teresa and I both have open head, completely open. So uh, we get a lot of information, inspiration, things like that. Some of it's not always ours. And so really discerning, are you responding to your own mind or are you responding to what's coming, you know, what's around you? So it'd almost be like, <clears throat> there's probably different ways that you could do this but sometimes i'll have some like if i get an idea right my mind and i'm still working through this in my own experiment or a download um i'll reach out to probably like Teresa or another friend or ask my husband i'll be like hey will you ask me this you know like i don't even know if this is mine <laughs> but will you ask me this question and then or do I you know ask me this and give me something to respond to because when it comes from outer it's can feel it more in my body um yeah yeah and Ross straight yeah. up says that he's like oh if you have an idea ask you could, yeah. you could just have somebody yeah. ask you so then you can really feel if it's correct for you yeah. and then you can actually yeah. be starting to work in response to something so and that I know that can kind of feel like mental fuckery um yeah but i, I want to go into the machining and forming but i want to check any questions okay this is amazing speaking only about mgs now when i know and look back to situations where i initiated and how it turned out not many situations where i sat back and waited to respond okay that oh no i wanted yeah, to yeah. comment about the three signs thing as well first first of all just off the bat that's incorrect mm -hmm. because you're either emotional or sacral and that doesn't take into account authority what if you get three signs in one day and you're emotional mm -hmm. and you haven't even slept on it yet you know what i'm saying so it's like that first of all just like right off the bat that mm -hmm. doesn't differentiate mm -hmm. authorities just wanted to throw that out there all right okay so initiating and informing <clears throat> Um, everybody can inform, by the way, every type. What? Oh, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> it's just yeah, like everybody can info. inform. Everyone can inform. <laughs> the more um, you know. <laughs> I was actually just talking to my projector husband about this before because uh, I got this idea and that he might want to listen to some raw lectures on projectors. And so... I asked him and I was like, hey, would you like me to send you this, you know, from this link? And uh, he's like, yeah, I actually asked you and Teresa to do that a while ago. And I was like, you did? I don't remember. <laughs> you did. I don't remember, but I was like, oh, this is a learning experience. Let's talk about this. And the invitation, I said, it might not have been received because you like, you know, were responding to our conversation and, you know, and now it feels like I recognize him and his like second line and all that, his love for mastery of things and projectorness. And, um, and so I recognized him and then in invited him to have this thing. And then it felt smoother. And I was like, so yeah, that projector aura, when you try to respond, it's like a poke and it probably was just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> But um, yeah, I just went off on a tangent. Oh, so I was talking to him about informing and I said, you can always inform and say, I would like to listen to the raw lectures on projectors and then give me something to respond to. Or I said, anywhere you're around, chances are you're around a lot of generators. So you can, or any type, you can inform them and then just wait to see what happens. Yeah, like, yeah. it'd be cool. Yeah if this happens <laughs> especially like with manifestors right just being like hey like i'm willing to do this yeah. <laughs> if you want to do that yeah uh, like <laughs> let's just 
team up if you want to. <laughs> I'm not asking you a yes or no so question. I'm just throwing it we out there. We heard a little bit about the physical Let's body <laughs> for manifesting generators and how that can manifest in the, in the thyroid and stuff like that and that burnout. And so connecting that dot of burnout could be over-initiating um, and over-initiating because when we're MGs and we hit a wall, we don't just like, oh, <laughs> we were like, okay, through the wall. You know, we can, or we can hop over the wall. We can manifest our way over the wall. And by that, I mean, initiate over the wall, through the wall, anything. And, and it might not be correct for us. And so that can lead to like physical things in the body, disease, things like that. Sorry, all my dogs are barking. But um, so that's a really good thing to like check in on if you're over initiating. I don't know who this is. Oh. Mom, hold on one second. You could take this. <laughs> I don't know where she was going with that thought. Sorry, guys. I said, Continue. Real life human design. My brain's like, no. Nope. <laughs> anyway, um, so over initiating can lead to physical things in the body. And I'm really passionate about that because when our body's not working, we can't listen to it, we can't hear it. So um, what is a time for you, Teresa, and anybody who's watching maybe can reflect on this, where you can look back and be like, and see the patterns of initiating and how that went in your life and where it went smoothly and where it didn't? Hmm. Yeah, when I really think about it, like everything that's worked out for me in the long term, I was working in response to. Even when I think about like jobs, that have come my way. I didn't go out and seek them. Like I've never, you know, I've done the whole Craigslist look for a job thing when I was younger. Those jobs never worked out. Internships, they never worked out. But anytime it would be like something that came into my aura where somebody's like, do you want to work here? Do you want to do this? I've been working in response and that's worked out. Um, I also, even just, you know, in my professional career, I think last year I like launched a group program that I felt like I was working in response to something because people kept asking me for this type of program. Um, but mm -hmm. I wasn't really clear on my authority with it, you know, and it was like, that's kind of an example of working in response, but also almost trying to like please others and not wanting to actually do it, but not yeah. knowing that that's true for me or not. Um, or there's been ideas that I've had out of thin air that I've just been like, oh, I'm going to do that. Yep. And initiate like super fast. And then it's not successful or like nobody shows up for it. Or, you know, it's a waste of my energy because I put all this energy into this thing and then nobody wants it. But when I'm like, I'm riding my wave about doing something in my business now and I feel like I'm actually doing this correctly because, you know, my business coach gave it to me to respond to she had the idea and then I did have some other people like asking me about this as well and now I'm taking my sweet time with it and I don't know when I'm gonna do it I'm not putting a date on it you know I think that's also a testament of my emotional authority and emotional generators are like we're on our own <laughs> island sometimes it feels like <laughs> because we have this like quick response mechanism but it's almost like we can't trust the sacral right we get this response and then we're like oh but i gotta wait like when it's something that's a big thing you know obviously just day to day is different but yeah it's like oh yeah i'm like super stoked on that i'm amped but i gotta wait like mm -hmm. three months <laughs> how i mean what however long clarity takes i don't know i don't know how long it's gonna take so yeah you, those are my do you feel any about a difference when of, you um wait your wave to then initiate yeah a hundred percent even i mean just like even little things like taking a course or um you know in the past i've just signed up for mm -hmm. courses oh i'm in a high i'm gonna click yes, add to cart, add to cart. And then three days later, I'm like, I don't want to do this. And then I just paid for something and I'm never showing up for it, you know? Um, but now it's like, 
when I, like when I decided to take the human design foundation courses, I wrote my wave with that. I worked in response. I waited for things to come into my field to respond to. Uh, and I was really dedicated to those classes. Mm -hmm. Like I showed up for pretty much every single class and uh, really finished it out. And it's the same thing with my business coach. Now I waited like six months before I signed on to work with her. So it's like, you just can't have these impulse buys and that kind of thing. If it's going to be a big investment of your time, your energy, your money, uh, you really need to take your time yeah. with it. Ride your wave. Yeah. yeah sacral's you're messier Obviously, sacral too, is when you're in the boom. mind and initiating and, and, or it, it, yeah, it's cause it's so quick. It just kind of like, well, and for me, I have ego to throw and it's just like comes out ugh, and not my, when I'm in, it's just not self and it's just it's like it's quick and it's loud and it's kind of aggressive <clears throat> i'm just like ah and then i notice this very this really good difference when i um inform like i it's almost like initiating and informing at the same time it's this is weird like combination but it feels correct for me and I notice that when I do that I'm not entering into things all wacky and things like really are smoother for me but I or I might initiate something and then inform and form and form and form and form what I'm doing as I'm moving along and that works out a lot better for me um, but that being a sacral generator or MG and like signing up for courses or classes and you're not actually listening to your sacral and it's all in your mind it, it can feel like sacral because it's like, ooh, Divine. you know, <laughs> but then like, where's that ooh coming from? You know, <laughs> it's like the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you have emotional definition yeah. that day yeah. and you're actually experiencing like a high or maybe it's your mind that is just convincing you. And I think that's where the nuance really comes in. I mean, it, I've had clients where it's taken them a year to really mm -hmm. figure out their sacral response. I mean, it's, it's something to figure out. It's just something that you feel that just clicks once you are able to notice it um, working. Want to get spicy you know? again? Um, how does it work for MGs yeah. to uh, be in conversation with manifestors? Are you done? You figured it out? Ooh. Like initiating like, yeah. when it comes like, to or what does it look or like or how can that be perceived as incorrect for you if it's actually correct Ooh. or you're working in response but it's perceived as initiating mm. i think any, any situation, talking about a specific yeah. situation? <laughs> <laughs> well the only experience i have with Whereas where I informed a manifester and I don't think they necessarily know what informing is and maybe they're just still early in their journey. I don't know. Um, they thought I was inviting when I was very clearly informing. <laughs> so, I mean, I think there's, there's a different, like an invitation is like, Hey, I see like recognition. I'm going to recognize this person. I'd really love to do this thing with you, you know? Um, it's it's an invitation. Would you like to do this? Or I'd really love to do this with you. Let me know if that works out. Um, and informing, I think, can sometimes be similar. There's a nuance to it, right? Where informing is just like, I myself would like to do this, or I'd be willing to do this. Let me know when, if that ever works for you. You know, it's not like a recognized specific invitation, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does that answer yeah, the question? Am I going on the right path with that? Okay. Informing. And so the language around invitation mm -hmm. and informing, because you weren't like initiating a manifester. You weren't. But we can initiate. Ra said. I mean, like, not to like preach it like the Bible, but that's what we have the ability to do when it's correct. When we're working in response. And when we're working in response. can have the not self theme yeah. of anger and frustration you know there's we're, we're that hybrid and <clears throat> probably just like any other type it really irks me when other types are like you know that's not how you operate especially when they're talking to mgs and maybe it's just because i am one but it's just so there's so many little nuances and it's like you can't do that you can't do that no i i'm
I am aware of my design. I know I, I know what is correct and not correct for me at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, he straight up says, it's a whole chapter, says the manifesting generator has a different strategy. We operate slightly differently than generators. We still have a generator aura. Yes, absolutely. Um, but there is, yeah, there's nuance there. So I think... <sighs> I think sometimes mm -hmm. we're misunderstood <laughs> in that way. Um, right. And we're also very well, susceptible like, to Well, in that situation, it would have been like you were responding to something that the manifester said. So you were informing. You could have even like initiated a conversation in response at that point. But you were informing that you were open to one. And then, but it, you didn't... Mm -hmm hop in that manifestor's DMs and be like, we need to have a conversation. That would have been very like manifestory. Yeah. That would have been, yeah, very manifestory. Yeah. But even, even so here, so there's, we were talking about this in class one day, there's a difference between telling and informing. And I think that's mm -hmm. why manifestors and even MGs can get a bad rap sometimes because there's that authoritative energy and I'm telling you what to do when informing is different informing is like i this would be my preference mm -hmm. let me know mm -hmm. when that works for you doesn't mm -hmm. have to be now doesn't have to be anytime soon you right. know it's like right. you're not telling somebody what to do you know someone says i'm just jumping in catch me. um yeah. we've been talking a lot you have almost for an hour so you can hop back on um <laughs> and check out the live <laughs> Um, when it's posted on the page, let me make sure I didn't miss any comments. What if you have totally lost track on your own response and feel like you're in a rabbit hole? Sacral MG. Uh, open head, rabbit hole. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like there's a whole, yeah. there's a bunch of nuances even in that question that I would want to know more about your design. Um, I would say then that doesn't feel like working in response maybe i don't know what do you think about that or what do you have to say about that what if you totally or have lost track on your again? own response and feel like you're in a rabbit hole hmm. lost track of your own response i mean did mm -hmm. you get yourself into something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is incorrect for you now and you're realizing this is incorrect mm -hmm. for me and I need to like pull myself mm -hmm. out. I need to course correct because that's also mm -hmm. something yeah, that I'm being afraid to course pivot. correct. That's with that. <clears throat> I almost do wonder what, yeah, you're a sacral MG. So you have undefined or open solar plexus. So wrapped up in that could be, you know, avoiding confrontation. You're ready to pivot. Um, and that's a good place to use informing, Hey, I'm going to do this instead. But beyond, behind that, with that undefined or open solar plexus, there's, you know, a lot of conditioning that we have to, like, be the nice person or just continue on because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Um, but don't be afraid to pivot as an MG. Don't be afraid to inform people that you've changed your mind, that you've got more information and that you've, you're, you're responding in a different way or you've got more things to respond to or something's come to you and you... You know, you could be going along this path and it's like, yes, 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 yes. And you get more information and then all of a sudden you hit a no. You don't, as an MG, sometimes we'll be like, oh, just bust through that no. Or any type can, you know, not listen to their no. And MGs, we can just pivot. Anybody can. But, I mean, it's, we pivot fast. We do it a lot. Mm -hmm. We change our mind a lot. And it's okay to yeah, and sometimes I feel like the thing with MG is that this was something that one of the first things I learned about us was sometimes we have to be doing something in order to realize if it's for us or not. Even if we were a yes in our authority, and then you start doing it, you're like, ah, actually, I, it's almost like I got what I needed from this. Maybe I got this nugget from this or I learned something. Because your authority is saying I'm gonna yes pivot. to the outcome. It's saying yes to the experience, like what you're what you're saying, what you're saying yes to that experience alone, you know, no matter how deep you are in something, you could have yep. purchased a car and realized it's a no, you know, and you're like, and then our mind gets in the way, but you have this and this responsibility and it's lost value and all this stuff. And then we listen to the mind and then that takes us down the incorrect path. 
Same thing like getting in business or with somebody or something. Yeah. It's okay to pivot. And that's where we can greatly trust and rely as generator types. We have to surrender and trust our bodies. All types have to trust their bodies to give them the correct response to navigate them through that. That, you know, we have the strategy and authority to navigate out of situations just as we got into them. If, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even just when I think about my career, I pivoted so much, but I'm glad I took all the twists and turns that I did because that information comes in handy. Like, you know, I did body work for, I mean, I still do it, but it's just not a focus in my career and it's pretty much referral only. Um, but I thought when I was, when I was learning it, when I was mostly doing that as my business, I thought body work was going to be the jam. I actually was looking into going massage school and like learning more about it and then yeah. pivot. <laughs> it's like, it can, it can happen, you know, it, for me, I mean, since I'm emotional, I mean, for a sacral MG, I would think it could happen really quickly. But for me, since I'm emotional, it would be like, oh, all of a sudden I'm kind of bored with this okay, maybe it's, maybe I'm having an off day. Let's see what happens. And then, you know, months go by and I'm like, eh, my interest in this is declining. <laughs> so, and then meanwhile, there's other things coming into my aura for me to respond to. And I'm like, oh, I like this more. This is actually lighting me up. This is what I want to go work on. And, and then like, we have all these that, skills, then, right? From pivot. all of the little things that we've like dabbled in, correct or incorrect, whatever, as you know, we're mm -hmm. just kind of squirreling around and hopefully living in our design and you know with the intention of being correct but we learn so much from that we can share from that like we talked about before and like that's where that piece of mastery comes in and when we're in connection with projectors and they see us doing this we just look like crazy people that are a mess you know <laughs> but, right yeah which sometimes we are <laughs> I mean, you and I throw ideas around all the time yeah. that we like yeah. never really take action yeah. on to. Yeah. We're just like, what about this? What about that? And the things that actually, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's almost like when something's correct, mm -hmm. though, is mm -hmm. when it just lands Absolutely. and keeps going. And living with a projector, I see him like he has like one topic that he like hones and goes deeper and deeper and deeper and one thing that he wants to do. And I'm like, and so he, I look scattered, like, I don't know what I want to do. And I'm like, no, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. You know, I've got six things going on and it's, I'm totally satisfied, you know, with, in these things and blah, blah, blah. So it just looks mm -hmm. very different for everybody. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I would say that, I don't know, I'm almost in this place where I'm like bored right now. And it's, it's because I don't have enough variety. Like I need more variety and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to take on something else right now to rev mm -hmm. my engine because I need mm -hmm. variety. If I'm just doing the same yeah. thing all the time, I start to get bored. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that that thing is incorrect for me. It just means that I need something else that's, you know, in the same field, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. gives me some spice and, and variety. And informing along the way around the people, to the people around us so that they feel more secure while we're like, Woo! they're like, you're not. Steady, you're not centered. There's something going on there, yeah. you know. And it's like, no, okay, I'll let you know. Here's what I'm doing, and they, it just like puts everybody else around you at ease. Mm -hmm. So when we're when we're flying fast and skipping steps, letting people know, and then in you know, really utilizing the people in our lives that are the other types, and having the I can't even remember what it was. Oh, I was making a flyer. Teresa and I are doing a class <clears throat> um, in November. And I was making a flyer and I sent her the image and then I showed my husband and he's like, you forgot a letter. And I was like, what would I do without a projector? Like, <laughs> you know, utilizing the other types and for their recognizing <laughs> their gifts and how we all have to work together, you know? And when we're all working together, there's just so much beauty that comes together and everybody's feeling recognized and satisfied and peaceful and successful and surprised and you know imagine if you asked a reflector to come in and like look over things to see how things felt in space or whatever you know they would be like first of all surprised that you even asked them and they would give you an honest reflection you know if you're make, creating a business plan and you have a projector in your life that where they've kind of mastered some system that's within that ask them to look over it you know 
these little things that we can do to recognize if you need some I don't know what MGs <laughs> what would somebody ask an MG to do <laughs> I don't even know so many things <laughs> I mean so many things all the things I mean I witnessed this with my parents my mom's a projector my dad's an MG and long story short my parents wanted to order a hot tub and <laughs> My dad, by the way, has 35, 36, and 1648. <laughs> so he's all about experiences. And he's like a jack of all trades. So this hot tub comes in the mail. And it's not, they knew it wasn't going to be traditional. And it said it had minor assembly. They literally had to build a hot tub. Like, they pretty much had to do everything except for sew the wood. Like, I'm not even kidding. So much work. He ropes my husband into helping him with it. He ropes my brother into it. These boys are working their butts off for every weekend for months on end. <laughs> but anyways, so he, my dad, he's 74 and he's still 2034 MG, still just like, yeah, so lit up about building this freaking hot tub. And my mom's like, I keep telling him he's going to get burned out. He needs to rest. Like he's, you know, he's still works full time, by the way. He's not retired. And then his whole weekend is dedicated to building this hot tub. And my mom's just like, she's watching him burn out. She's watching him walk into a wall and he's like, no, I just, mm -hmm. you know, one more hour. Mm -hmm. I just need to finish this. It's like a child. And my mom's just and did like, it, he didn't you invite you. Your mom was like, I don't know if we should get <laughs> you know? that hot tub. Like. <laughs> oh, if my dad would have listened to my mother's projector guidance, this would, a lot could have been avoided. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's a really freaking cool hot yeah. tub and they're stoked yeah. on it now that it's built. So I almost think. My dad does not have channel of struggle, but he might have a hanging gate there. Mm -hmm. So he might be conditioned to struggle. You know, I can't remember. But I think he just likes projects, too. So he was stoked on it. But, it, I mean, he did get himself burnt out. And my mom was trying to guide his energy. Like, hey, you need to take a rest. And then eventually, yeah, like, yeah you're so right. Your dad right. was probably like a, a yes to a hot tub. <laughs> and then the mind was like, let's pick out a hot tub. It was definitely a mental, oh, I mean, both my parents are emotional, yeah. but it was definitely a mental decision, I feel yeah. like. Because they were like, um, they, they almost did like pros and cons. Like what, what would be the pro of getting like a traditional hot tub? And what's the pro to doing this one? But in, and to their credit, this guy very much misrepresented this thing. But again, intuition can usually pick up on that, right? Unless they were supposed to learn a lesson. Maybe they were just <laughs> meant to get better at communicating or something. <laughs> Nothing well, like a good old fashioned your husband project. Having 20, 30, to get you communicating broke better. into it. I remember it being like, you're like, you can like say yes or no, you know? It's, yes. Yeah. He has a defined heart. So he's like, and he has 3740. So he's like, oh, I need to do it for the family. And yeah. he was like, I, just, I can't say no to your dad. I just can't say no to him. I'm like, you got to get uh -huh, better boundaries uh -huh. with that 3740. You know, and even my brother's a 5'1", and he got roped. Yeah. He's an engineer, though, so he kind of has skills around that anyways. But he <laughs> got roped in to come in and fix everything. <laughs> It's it's so funny watching these yeah. things play out when you know yeah. the mechanics of everything. Yeah, and if I can like, imagine, <laughs> like, uh, your brother, what's his type? Is he an MG? A gen. Okay, so at least there He's was somebody who would, like, generator. maybe pay more attention to not skipping steps. Like, it was just a bunch of MGs, like, and I, and I mean, yeah. this hot tub is, like, wood panels. I saw it's, like, a barrel hot tub. It's a big one, but it's, like, you had, they had to put every piece mm -hmm. together. They even had to, like, plumb it and stuff, and I'm, like, if it was just a bunch of bees doing that, it would just all of a sudden the water Drill. would like shoot out the side. <laughs> oh, you know what? They did have an issue where my dad was trying to skip a step and I don't think Thomas caught it. And I don't know if my brother was there that day, but they were basically trying to like, there's like this lining, you know, and that you have to get it perfect. And the instructions were very clear. Like you have to get this perfect. If the lining isn't incorrectly, it's going to be a shit show. And he said they spent... Anytime they would do it wrong, it would take them yeah. two hours to undo it. And so they like did it wrong like three times. Like we spent a whole day just trying to get this. And then they were having to um, use buckets to get the, because you're basically supposed to put the water in, make sure it's all good. And then they were having to use buckets to get the water out. 
and he said it took them two hours just to get the water out to redo it. Eventually, my dad, MG, was like, I'm going to go buy a pump. <laughs> Efficiency, right? It's like you have to learn the hard way before right. you're like, okay, cool. Now we're going to make this efficient. I'm going to go get a pump. Mm -hmm. I really doubt my mother was watching all so, of this go down at this point. Let's talk about that real quick, too. She would have had words um, about it. Define heart MGs, you know, really um, having awareness mm -hmm. between, like, when you're in a situation. Okay, because, like, listening to you talk... I know if I was in it, I would have pushed, but witnessing it now, I've been like, I would have just said, take it back, you know, at this point, like it's checking in with yourself and your sacral as you move on to next steps. Is this still a yes? Is this, or even emotional authority? I just speak from sacral because that's what I am. But, um, you know, checking in along the way. And even yeah. if you're like three quarters of the way putting a hot tub together and you have like a healthy ego, you know, I would easily just be like, and I'm done. And this has to go back. But if you don't, or you don't have awareness of it, that ego can be pushing you. And then you have that sacral just energy anyways, and it burn out right away. Well, I noticed my husband was getting sick. Like he was starting to and it was it wasn't the kind of thing where he was like full on sick, but he was just like, Oh, I feel under the weather. And like, yeah, you know, having those loaf days where he's just wanting to be on the couch and doesn't have any motivation. And it was after they had finished the project. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, he used all of his willpower to finish that project. And I kept telling him the whole time, you could say, no, I know, I know my father gave you this beautiful <laughs> gift of me, but you're not forever indebted to him. <laughs> you can, you yeah, can say yeah, no. That willpower. And then it's drained. And then I know. So Especially with that 3740. That. Man, we're learning so much about it. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I, have so, I mean, I think 37, so I have so much conditioning in that yeah. 40 yeah, with my it. open ego. I think all, I think, I don't know if my brother has it for sure. I know he has a defined heart, but yeah. my parents Someone both have question, it. And my how husband. do you find your type? You can go to jovianarchive.com and type in your information just know that your birthday is in military birth time is in military time um and if you have your exact time that's preferred because it can shift throughout the day the type it, it can like even go from like reflector to mg sometimes it's crazy so cl as close as you can if you don't have the exact date or exact time um do you have any good tips for mg to mg work to work well in a relationship. I'm gonna hand that over to you, Teresa, because you are in an MG, MG relationship. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so oh, this is specific I mean, on like romantic that's what relationships? I felt, but yeah. Okay. I can't, for some reason, the new yeah, comments are coming okay. through. That's why I keep asking you to repeat them for me. Um, yeah, so. I, it definitely depends on your configuration because if you're split definition, that's going to be different, right? Brandy's a split def MG. Um, my husband and I are both single definition and he has almost the whole integration circuit. I think he's just missing gate 57. Um, well, my fan just turned on by itself. That was weird. <laughs> um, anyways, so I have 1020. So I do have some integration and he's on the roof right now. I'm a second line. There's certain things that just like with our charts that just mesh well. Um, but I would say as far as just being an MG, what we've learned as well, I used to get really upset with him because I wanted him to like be the man, you know, and take charge and make decisions. Something as simple as, especially when I was working a ton and I just had zero energy and was in burnout and we'd be going on a date and I'd be like I don't want to even think about what I want can you just take us somewhere you know but he doesn't have anything to respond to so he's like well I don't know so we've just figured that we have to ask each other questions back and forth like do you want tacos no you know it's like it's not his responsibility to make all the decisions because I need to check in with my response too right um I'm trying to think of what else has been hard for us. We're both just extremely independent. I think just being single definition MGs is probably like the most independent configuration if I had to pick one because we don't, it's like we don't need anything from anybody else. We're not looking for energy to the throat from anybody. And then we're single definition. So we're not, we're 
we can just be by ourselves and be content. So him and I have had to get really good with communicating because, you know, he could just, either of us could just like leave the house and not say anything to each other. <laughs> like three hours later, he'd be like, oh, where'd you go? What if something happened to one of us or something? And we don't, don't know where the other person is. It's just like little things like that. So overly communicating, I feel like, because um, him and I will both get in our zone and we just can't pull ourselves out of it. Um, and then just also yeah. supporting each other and resting because we both have a tendency to do too much. And so when it's like, I don't have a projector partner that like is maybe being aware of how I'm getting burned out. And when I see him doing a bunch of shit, I'm like, yeah, he's just doing his thing. Whereas we kind of both have to be aware of each other in burnout mode. And, you know, I also think just like autonomy has been so important because I used to be, I used to be in like codependent situations and I would say my husband and I, even when we were younger, we're more codependent. And now we just have such a sense of independence. Like there's no um, forcing each other to do anything mm -hmm. because that can lead to frustration. Right. So let's say for example, you know, we have dinner, we had dinner with his parents planned last week. I was in a low, I just didn't feel like going. Um, I was, I have thoracic outlet syndrome and I was having a lot of pain and it was just like, I just don't, I had to cancel last minute and he wasn't upset with me at all. You know, it's just like things like that, or I'm going to go to dinner and my parents, do you want to come asking him that question instead of just assuming that he wants to come with me or just putting that on him, actually uh, seeing him as his own person and yeah, asking him a yes or no question, allowing himself to get a response. And I can tell it. I mean, we've known each other for so long. I can tell when he's lying. I can tell, mm -hmm. you can always oh, tell when a generator's lying, his voice will go up. Yeah. It's not a sacral response. Uh -huh. Like, he'll be like, yeah, sure. It's a lie. And I'm like, nope, you're not coming. Yeah. It's fine. Like, and there's no hard feelings. So it's really just like, it's not personal. It's mechanics. I say that to myself all the time in so many situations. And being in an MG yeah, to MG um, relationship is no exception. Came up for me to respond to when you were talking was, um, being MG, MG relationship or just friendship or partnership or anything like that. Um, not having the expectation that they can do a lot and remembering, I mean, for any generator type, but they have a lot of energy for what they love to do. We have a lot of energy for what we love. So having to make sure, making sure to remove the expectation of like, oh yeah, you have energy for this because you're an MG. It's like, no, that's not how it works. Uh, and you also just gave me an aha moment because I'm split deaf and my husband's single definition. And if he leaves the house without like telling me where, like, it's not a control thing. I don't care where he could go anywhere he wants to leave anytime he wants to, but it's like, you just like disconnected from me and didn't let me know. It's like a very, like that weirded me out when you said like, I'll just leave. And I'm like, that would be the weirdest mm -hmm. thing for me, but he doesn't care when I do it. I think I've conditioned him to care because I care, I, I care. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's 27. I care. <laughs> um, I care. Maybe not a good idea to work together then. Actually, I fucking love working with other MGs. I love all the types. I like working with all the types. But mm -hmm. like building, when we're building something and creating something, MGs are my, like if I had a preference. Because we can, like, it feels like Captain America, like, when our powers combine, and that can be like that if you're working within all the types, but something about MGs, you can get a lot done really quickly. Um, there's also lots of room for error <laughs> when you have a bunch of MGs working. So having, like, different, the nuances of our designs and just, like, what people are good at and catching it and recognizing people, the MGs for their correct thing and not abusing the, the energy or the power of the MG, um, I work with three MGs right now, or there's three of us MGs at my other business that like are the bit, like do everything. I'm the owner and then they're, they're building with me and <clears throat> Teresa even chimes in. She's actually going to come fly here and work with us for a week. So there's going to be four of us that are just like locked and loaded. Like Ooh. we, there, we can bend time with the amount of things that we can get done if we're all in our zones of what we love to do. Um, and then we have to have somebody come in and be like, make sure we didn't fuck up, you know, anything. Or, 
Well, you know what I think is cool about that is that we're putting together yes. something yes. to yes. send to a projector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she can mm -hmm. check all of our work. <laughs> it's yeah. perfect she's kind of just like overseeing yeah. it from afar like that's we're gonna true, go exactly. ham and then we're gonna send it she'll to her and on she'll it. send back I mean, revisions like, we're gonna get everything like together that's and, like, ideal put it all into place and then we send it to the projector and she puts a bow on it you know so it Mm -hmm. And normally it would be cool for her too, because normally she's the one doing all the work for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So she actually just gets to be in her projector yeah. role yeah. and oversee yeah. it. And it's been really cool uh, working with her too, because I feel this pressure, mental pressure to get it done. Um, and then life happens and life and life and more life. And I'll check in with her. And she's like, there's really no, there's no rush. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the permission. Emo emotional like, projector. It's okay. And then what that does is it gives me time for, to like, to let things line up and come into my aura of like how it's going to play out. Because all of a sudden it was like, I was responding to something and I called Teresa. I was like, Hey, I want to come down or up for a week and like go ham on this. You know, I was like, and she was like, I'm a yes. I was like, well, let's wait a little, like, we're not going to buy your plane ticket today. Let's wait. <laughs> but yeah. But we, I slept on it and then texted you first thing in the morning. Iceberg <laughs> moments. But um, yeah, and then yeah. everything just kind of clicked into place. And I talked to my other MGs and, and they're like, yeah, I'm a, you know, we can like, literally they're, the other two are both stoked, just as stoked as I am. Like, we might ham out 12 hours in one day, like go down there and be like there from like nine to eight, nine to nine. I mean, like, I can't even imagine what we're going to be able to get done. So if there's MGs in your life and wild. recognizing them for the things that they light you up, they would love to, you know, be part of the thing and help you build the thing or create the thing. You know, it's when you're dra dragging them in and they don't want to do it or having those expectations that they have the energy to do, to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like when it's correct for everybody and that's what's happened. It's like, you know, it's slowly getting correct for me, you know, because yeah. I'm like on my own weird emotional timeline. And then it's all yeah. like the pieces start to lock into place when it's all correct for everybody. And we're on makes me want to do a, so it's like a chart of everybody that's gonna the be fractal. there. So oh, yeah. one is an MG from from sacral or from root, you know, sacral to throat. And she has the beat, which is an amazing channel because we got a little taste of that the other day. Holy crap, that channel is amazing. Um, so she has that. Yeah. And then Ryan has channel of charisma. So we got like two soup, like, lots of energy for, you know, when they're doing what they love. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, this is just gonna be like magic. I, yeah. And I got 26. I got so 24. We just all <laughs> lock into place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it'll be kind of lock interesting. Lock and loaded. You know, the dynamics. <laughs> so it'll be four of us. So it almost makes me wonder, like, mm -hmm. do we bring in a fifth? I don't know. That's my mind, right? This is my mind right now. <laughs> well, maybe yeah, our projector is the fifth. Out. She's yeah, just energetically. Sense. Because there was a, we discussed this a little bit on the, our Santa Fe talk know. that's on here. Um, just like the penta dynamics. And it would be like three or five, you know, because if you have four, it's like you need to like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, <laughs> we might need Andy to just come like sit with us. <laughs> be in the penta. <laughs> just be in the penta. <laughs> I mean, he could oversee mm -hmm. us and make sure that we're not doing stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> he did that yesterday when I was in, I had a meeting for my staff and I was just up front chat, chat, chat. And he'd be like, what about? And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just have, not a bad idea, right? <laughs> Run the penta charge for all five. Oh man, have you ever experienced a recognized successful projector in your life? Because they are just delicious. Like I could eat them up. You know, they don't, they're, delicious. yeah, their auras are penetrated, but mm -hmm. it's almost like this seductive, like, yeah, penetrate my aura. <laughs> you know, it's not like, oh, you know, <laughs> so I need your guidance. It's I need just your like, guidance. It's amazing <laughs> to, to work. And it's really important that we do because we, we need around to guide us or this everything's going to go to shit yep 100%. all right 
<sighs> well, how good? are we feeling? Any more questions? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Or <laughs> to make sure that we, we know need that projector in that is correct for us, you know, and being like, hey, what about that? And then it gives us something right. to respond to. And then we can kind of check in with ourselves again and make sure that if we need to pivot or not as MG. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if we skipped a step, we get called out. Dude, I do that all I mean, the time. It's a I step that we can't pool, skip. And I was like, we can do it this way. <laughs> Because I always, in my mind, feel like things can be done a lot faster than the rest of the world does them. So I'm like, we can set this pool up in an hour. Yeah. What do you mean it's going to take all day? <laughs> it's not going to take a day. It's going to take an hour. And here's how we do it. And then it's like unbalanced. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Maybe we missed a step. Okay. Well, um, I feel complete unless anybody else has any more questions. And um, yeah. if you're watching the replay of this, feel free to drop any questions that you have in the comments because we do one of these at least every week. Um, you can always come back to give us something to respond to. Um, if you have a topic that you want to hear us chat about or chat with us about, um, if you have some anything, give you something to respond to, you can hop in our DMs. We usually personally invite projectors. Um, so, yeah. And yeah, yeah, I've been like, I like this idea of like yeah. finding source material and actually reading it. Um, so even if somebody has an idea of something that they're curious about or something that, you know, I can dig through the source material that I have and see if there's information on that topic and then we can yeah. read it and yeah. dig in like we yep, have today. It's called so. a human design chart. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what a great introduction to uh, human design if this is like your first time learning about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I feel yeah. like we were yeah. or definitely if some, speaking if the language. Something specific so. that you're looking for, um, and accessibility is an issue for you as far as literature or books or anything like that, please reach out to us in our DMs. Um, yeah, and if you're looking for specific things, you can visit Jovian Archive, you can go to Human Design America. Um, I highly recommend the Living Your Design book. It's the student manual, looks like this. Um, anybody can buy it, so you don't have to take the class to do it. Um, actually, Teresa and I, she might still be writing her wave about it, um, or I'm taking Living Your Design Guide, pretty sure she is, with a lock. Uh, he's a 1-3 manifester that works really closely with Ra, and so we're really excited about that. So we will be able to teach Living Your Design um, sometime next year. So that's exciting. And stay tuned. We have a class coming yeah, up yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of loosely based on Living Your Design. It'll be a four-week class. So we'll be posting about that soon. We'll go through all the centers, all the types, authorities. Um, no circuitry or gates or anything like that, except Teresa always speaks in the language of gates, so she might use comparisons. <laughs> She's just so good at that. Like, oh, Can't help yeah, it. It must be, I feel like that's your Ajna. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I do not have that gift. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> First time learning, uh, and I've been listening to Living Your Design this weekend. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great course for oh, anybody. Awesome. You don't have to want to teach human design to take the class. You don't have to want to do anything with human design in your business or anything. It's living your design is about your personal design and understanding it um, so that you have awareness for your own self. Yeah, it's an experiential class. So you basically, they give you videos and that kind of thing. And then you show up to yep. class to integrate and talk. Awesome. So, all right, everybody. Class. Peace out. See you later. Bye.